Good morning, good morning. Here we are, back in the saddle. My God, back in the saddle. It seems like a million years. <clears throat> what was it, just two, two weeks, two and a half weeks? It doesn't seem like two and a half weeks. It seems like a previous lifetime. I used to be here in this place. I came in the other night from the airport, walked down the street. I remember this area. I used to live here. <laughs> I think it's something with me, you know, once I'm out of something, I just put it behind me. I don't think about it. I don't, whatever, you know, just not in the moment. That's not quite true because I remember stories and I tell stuff about things, but really I put stuff behind me. Welcome back, guys. Thank you very much for being here again after I ignored you for so long. Thank you. Thank you. The trip 12 over we'll chat about things as we go on the next few streams. Maybe there'll be stories to tell about the uh, about Vancouver, what happened, you know, nothing special. Basically just a family trip. Look at all this. Good morning, good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice to feel missed, you know. So what's this? 15 centimeters of snow at Edmonton? Not my problem. <laughs> so Good morning, good morning. I, just before we get going, hang on a second. What's going on outside here? This wasn't there a few minutes ago. It looks like a pile of dead... Oh, I know what it is. It's Monday. It's a pile of dead umbrellas, I think. It's from the, it'll be from the Oyster Shack next door. We have our own collection of dead umbrellas here. People come into a shop or restaurants, raiding, whatever. They fold their umbrella up, leave it outside. One hour, two hours later, they go outside. The sun's shining. Nobody remembers, and they leave their umbrella behind. So over time, we end up with a stock of umbrellas, and I think that's what they're doing. They're tossing out the umbrellas there. Lots and lots and lots of questions. And as I said, we'll, we'll answer stuff as we go along. The trip overall was fantastic, of course, time with my kids. The best thing for me this time around was that the two little kids, my grandchildren, the youngest one, Archie, he's now three. Before, he was all like, every time I go near, he's like just in the way. So I had no real contact with him. And because of that, his sister played the same game. But this year, they were good to go. So granddad, granddad had some fun in, in the time that he spent with the little kids. So, so that was a, a plus for me this time. My mom is doing okay. For those of you who remember her, she used to take part in these streams. She's okay. She's in a nursing home now. She, she had her 97th birthday while I was there. She knows where everybody is. She's fine. She's not alert in the sense of, Go, 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 but she knows who she is. She knows what's going on. She takes parts of conversations. She can't really do stuff like click the mouse and hunt up URLs and join the Twitch stream and follow the chat. She's not really into that anymore. So that part of her life is behind her. But she is okay. I did ask her, you know, do you remember the days you were looking at the Twitch stream? And she did. I asked her if she could remember some names and... and uh, not really, I'm sorry. So, you know, you might remember my mom. She maybe doesn't remember you so well, but whatever. She's being cared for very well. She's in a, a really nice nursing home. You know, I, it's a nursing home, so really nice is, is not... Whatever, it's a really nice nursing home. Food is great. The care is great. The ratio of caregivers to people is fine. She's in sort of a high security place where the elevators are locked and stuff like this because there's people that don't really understand where they are. She's being cared for every day. My brother, who used to live in Germany, is, uh, has moved over there. He's staying in her old apartment, and he attends every day to take care of her. So she is being really, really well cared for. That's Betty. That's my mother, yeah, Bet. So, so the overall news then from Vancouver is, there we are. My, my family is doing well. My daughters are flourishing. My mother is happy and healthy. I spent tons of time with my brother and sister. So the family is... The family is what a family is. You know, no big stresses. Today's plan. Today's plan. Today's plan. I know. I got back actually late Friday night. Came in here and saw this and I thought, am I going to stream tomorrow morning? And I just, no, there's just no way. I'm sorry. It wasn't just jet lag. It was, you know, where am I? Who am I? What's going on? So I didn't even try and stream uh, Saturday morning. I spent the last two days relaxing here in the shop. There's no office. The office was closed Friday for a holiday. No office people Saturday, Sunday. So I spent the last two days basically zoned out, sitting in the shop, chatting with customers, lots of YouTube viewers. And now Monday morning for our first stream. 
There's not going to be any carving. I'm not ready for that yet. The carving that you'll be seeing over the next few weeks is going to be for girl carving. But I can't just jump back, grab that block, where am I? So today we're going to do something different. I've got a ton of stuff on my desk and behind my desk here that people have been stacking up for me over the last few weeks. We're not going to spend too much time dealing with tax returns and all that kind of stuff. That's not of any interest to this. But we'll look at some prints that have come in and I have waiting for me here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven unopened auction packages as in show and tell. So I think that's what we're going to do today. I'm not ready for carving. I'm not ready for any actual productive printmaking work. Let's just have a peaceful extended inspect prints and then let's open a bunch of packages slowly, see what's inside them and see what we can see. So it'll be a, it'll be a, whatever, un unboxing stream, you tell me whatever. I don't, oh, there's green tape. There is green tape. <laughs> So if it's okay by you, let's do it this today. If you're here for the carving and the, the dirty detail with the microscope work, we won't be doing that today. Save that for next week. As to the paper out, the paper is out for two printers. I got right back in the saddle this morning, headed straight upstairs. Uh, Ayumi-san is now working on Hanami Cats. She finished the previous job. That was done while I was in, in Canada. She's now working on Hanami Cats, which I teed up for her before I left. And Ishikawa-san, is taking on a new challenge. And while she is doing this over the next couple of weeks, I want to get her in here and talk about this. You probably haven't, you might have met Ishikawa since she just sort of drops in sometime in passing on her way upstairs. She has felt confident about her work recently and she's taking on a new challenge. And instead of making smaller prints like she's made for a subscription series, for the first time, she is trying a large Mitsugiri Bam print, the one in our catalog called Akino Miyajima. And I want to talk to her about that and show you what's going on. She may not really want to do that because she's not 100% confident about things, but whatever, whatever. We'll see how it goes. So that's what we'll do today. Let's clean up stuff here. Oh, also I see on the bench here, there's two packages left one by mail. And I think these are probably stream people who have sent in prints. The staff opened it. Yeah, so we will have two prints to look at from, I believe, people who are, are watching today. We have an embarrassment of riches. Where to start? Where to start? Simple stuff first. This is Ishikawa-san. She gave these to me last night. This is something you've seen before. Nothing special here. This is another batch of the print that Taran-san and I did on a Twitch stream a couple of months ago. And also too, in my email, I see lots of questions about this. When is that Twitch stream going up onto YouTube? Just hang in there, it'll go up. You know, I have to do the editing, I have to do a bunch of subtitles for the Japanese parts. It will go up fairly soon. So just hang on, please. So you've seen these, nothing new to this one. This is Ishikawa-san now, just blowing through some easy work for her. This print at the moment is not in our catalog. It's going out to Patreon members as the Nenga print this year. Ishikawa also has another one for me here. Ah, and she's mentioned that she did have a problem on this one at some point with the registration. Because this is one of the old Doi Hunga blocks, which is made from a double carved block. And the blocks have shrunk quite a lot. Very difficult to handle. And it's very, very difficult to get the registration perfect across the full surface of the print. This is one of the old Doi Hanga blocks. This is, uh, is this coming, Amujinja? No, this is Zozoji. This is the temple in, in Tokyo, in Shibaura. And man, these blocks are worn out and we really are not sure should we be using these. But I think it's okay. We have things like this, look. The block here, instead of being nicely carved line, it's smacked up. There are lots of places where the outside lines are broken. These are pre-war blocks. These are maybe 1932, 35, somewhere around there. And I have no way of calculating how many prints would have been made from these blocks over the generations. And we're talking 
generations. So again, yeah, the lines really are to quite an extent beaten up, but I'm not bothered about that. As long as we tell people what's going on, and we do in the story that goes along with this print, we explain that these are old blocks. And this just looks, it looks almost just natural, the snow and the carving, you know. Who would have carved these? Lost in the mists of time. How many prints Doi Company would have made from them? Lost. So I'm talking about the greens here. Are there different greens? Uh, off, off the top of my head here, I don't know. I would think it's one green block. Someone says the kimono green is looking different from the bushes. I don't think so. I think that's an illusion. I believe it's just one green. Yeah, some of the greens here, of course, are, are overlaid. There's bits of gray on top of some of them, but I believe the green is just a single color. She's done a nice job. <laughs> we will, of course, be, be slicing these up. We don't send them out like this as a double. We cut them. And actually, I probably shouldn't have showed it like you in this form because every time I show something like this, I get requests. Dave, can we buy an uncut version? It's like stamp collectors. They want to get the uncut sheets. And really, we just, no. We, we publish the prints as they are, one by one. That's that one, that's this one. Let's get the desk, let's dig down through the layers here on the desk. Those are done. We know this one, white tape, ready for your ears. This is from This is from Kubo de Saint. And when I got back here Friday night, and when I was in the shop here the last couple of days, this, this box was waiting on the desk. And there was a note with it that said, Dave, Kubo de Saint is going to call you and explain something about what happened during this printing. This is, of course, from Kubo de Saint, our Top Gun printer. I saw the message. I didn't open the print, so there was stuff going on. I didn't want to start work over the weekend. But uh, there was a messenger that said, Dave, Kubo de Saint, is going to call you about this one. And he did. He phoned yesterday afternoon, or maybe it was Saturday afternoon, I don't remember. And he said, welcome back, welcome back. And he, he then, he sounded really apologetic. He said, I don't know, about the job I just finished, I sent it back. And I said, yeah, yes, Kubota-san, thank you. I didn't actually open it yet. I haven't inspected. And then he starts apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought, like, okay. I don't know, how are the prints? You know, is something wrong? And he said, no, no, the prints are fine. The prints are fine. I'm like, why are you apologizing? What's going on? He said, well, he said, it's, I've, I really feel bad about this. He said, it's probably not the first time I've ever done this, but it's the first time in many, many years that I, that I did such a thing. And I really feel ashamed. I'm embarrassed. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's going around and around something instead of getting to the point. This is the way he's done this. And I'm thinking, the prints, are the prints okay? I mean, don't worry. This wasn't for a deadline job. These are just a bunch of prints that we, you know, we need in our catalog. He said, no, 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 the prints. I think the prints are okay. And uh, yeah, the prints actually do look okay. This is one of the most popular prints in our catalog. We did it for the gift print a couple of years back. And we keep running out of them, running out of them, running out of them. And we've been printing like 40, 50 or 60 at a time. And I'm, miss I'm mixing the stories here. Just hang in. That's okay. We've been printing 40, 50, 60 at a time. And kubota san visited. I told you about this. He visited us just before I went to Canada. And he said, you know, about the quantities of these, when there's a print with, you know, a dozen colors or so, it takes me more time to mix the colors. And if I'm only doing 60, I've spent more time mixing colors than I did doing printing. Roll up the quantity, you know. 
And I had said, but you had told me you didn't want to sort of work extended hours or whatever. She says, no, no, if, if it's a giant large print, let's keep the quantity low. But if it's a fairly simple small print, jack up the quantity. Because I can just, well, after mixing my colors, I can just go, 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 go. And that's the way he does. So I did. So I doubled the quantity for this one. Instead of sending 60, and then three months later, 60 copies to another printer, and three months later, 60, I sent 120 sheets. And he would have been happy, 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 happy. And the prints, of course, they're just absolutely identical, one by one by one. This is a Hasse print, which we carved as a reproduction. This is not original blocks. This is our reproduction. We won't be putting his name on it, because on the small prints like this, there's not enough room. We don't want to uh, mix them up with printers' names. But my God, what a good job. The snow is perfectly sharp and clear. The gradation is perfect. This guy is just a machine. Just a machine. But anyway, back to the main story. He's apologizing, apologizing. I still haven't opened this. I don't know what's going on. And he says, I got the prints done a long time. Good, thank you very much. And I'm like, yeah, 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 waiting for him to get to the point. And he said, I was you're cleaning the blocks at the sink, getting all the pigment off and wrapping them up. And here's where the story comes in. And he said, I damaged one of the blocks. I guess he maybe knocked them together or he dropped one a little bit. And he said, I damaged one of the blocks. And like this is, this is actually kind of a bad thing. You know, printers are supposed to really, 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 really take care of the blocks. If a block set did become damaged to the point where we can't print from it, this is a really bad thing. These things are worth a ton of money. He apologized for damaging one of the blocks. Now, of course, I'm like, whatever, Kabuta's hand, you know, like, I haven't ever done that. Okay, no problem, no problem. And I was, I tried to thank him. Thank you for letting me know. It, I, it's not something I want to discover at the time when we sit down to print next time. So he, uh, and then he offered, like, to pay for fixing them and stuff, I guess. And you know my answer there. Jeez, Kabuta san, give me a break. I'm a carver. We do this all the time. If the block is dinged, we will just fix it, whatever. This sort of stuff happens, you know? This stuff happens. So somewhere here, Gizumi, on the key block. Did he do that? We do have the damage on the key block. What on earth, how on earth would he have done that? Well, actually, looking at it, first, first inspection is, this is going to be a, a no, no big problem to repair at all. In fact, tell you what, let's make a date. I'll, let's fix it on stream. Not like right now. I haven't prepared. I haven't got anything ready. No tools, whatever. Let's fix it on stream. But how on earth would this happen? And usually it's a ding. You know, the, the thing is when we've got two blocks, whatever, let me zoom out for something. It's like, you know, we're holding something, whatever. We get another corner and we would maybe ding something. So a smooth area on a print would get dinged by the corner of another block. And that would leave a, a white area in the smooth area. That happens all the time. But your guess is as good as mine. What might have happened here? That's a major, major chop. I don't know. He did try and explain. Actually, I wasn't really listening to him because I was so... Once I had realized that what he was calling about, that he was apologizing for damage, my number one concern was just, it's okay, Kabura-san, don't worry about it. We can fix it. You know, I, did, I wanted to show that I wasn't angry, there wasn't money, there wasn't anything. <clears throat> so I wasn't actually really paying attention and listening to his, uh, to his attention, to what he was saying. And yeah, this happened after the printing was finished. So all the prints that he has given me, 
they have a normal staircase. Where is it? It's, it's right next to the guy's foot here. It's this area here, right below. And very luckily too, this is the wood grain runs this way, straight up and down this wood. So this uh, problem is running straight along with the wood. So this is going to be an easy one. I will chop out, well, let's save this, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later when we do it, but I will chop out and make the hole larger and cleaner, and then I will simply put a strip of wood, bang, we'll cut it to shape, pop it in there, we'll be good to go. It has damaged some of the staircase. So someone's saying, is it a fragile piece of the wood? That's another one, it looks like a splinter, doesn't it? No evidence that the wood is splintery or chipped up at all. I don't know. Anyway, it's going to... The guy's got a peg leg. <laughs> so, you know, this is going to be a relatively easy fix. Okay, we've got a date. I don't know when. Next Thursday? Next Saturday? Something? We'll see. No promises. We will fix it on stream because that'll be good fun. We need him so much that there's no way, there's nothing he could do to get in my bad books. Absolutely nothing. What did I do with the string? Someone says he dropped a chisel on it. I mean, the guy shouldn't be using chisel. His kentonomi, even that, if you dropped it on it, would just make a ding. No idea. <laughs> He's just wanted to create stream content. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, that's an easy one. If that was the worst block repair I had ever been faced with, we'd be laughing. Okay, we have a date on this one. Okay, that's done, that's done, that's done. Let's get this out of the way. There are lots more prints, actually, for me to inspect. They're, they didn't leave them on my desk. I guess Ayano-san must have them. All the prints that were finished while I was away, we asked the printers themselves, do your own selection. Break them up into good ones and questionable ones. The good ones, send them out to the customers. So the printers themselves, while I was away, made the decisions on which prints were good and which prints were no good. And I asked them to go easy. You know, if there's something you're not sure about, hold it back. So somewhere upstairs, maybe Ayama-san is holding the package for me or whatever, there's a whole bunch of prints for me to check over and see all the stuff that was finished during the last couple of weeks. So I'm saying, how do we keep, where is it? How do we keep the colors and stuff? We keep a mihon. We keep a sample for everything. And in fact, it's in that box. Look, hang on a sec. I pulled the blocks out of that box that we sent to Kobota-san. And when we sent it to him, I'm sorry, today's conversation, I'm just going to jump all over the place, all over the place. When we sent him the blocks, we also sent this. It's in a plastic file. This is the base print, the Mihon. And we've got it, so it's all written down. This is, it's all with our company stamp on whatever, and it says, I don't know. So, this particular Mihon comes from our Ome workshops. When the blocks come back, send this back to Ome, and it will be stored together with the blocks. And next time we have another print to go, we need another print run, the Mihon goes with the blocks. So we're careful. The blocks themselves, you saw, they have a print wrapped up on the outside of it. That's not the Mihon. That's not the sample. We have a large file here at Mokohankan with all our master copies. And this is interesting. Maybe there's something here. If is there a notebook that goes with this? How did you mix this brown? What level of red and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black? How did we make that brown? That's up to the printer. The printer's job, he takes the Mihon. He knows what to do. He's got his deck of five or six colors. To make this, he probably started with some, to make that brown, he'd put some yellow in a bowl. Then he'd throw a bit of red in it, make some a bit more orange. Then he'd start throwing black in it, gray, and he'd mix those up until you get this color. I don't think there's any blue in it. I don't see any blue there. My guess is this is a yellow base with red and then black, 
and it will make that brown. And we never, ever, 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 and I mean capital E-V-E-R, we would never mix white into one of those pigments to try and change the tint and the tone. Never. The white is the white from the paper. There's no white pigment on this thing you're actually looking at. Looking at. All the white here is white paper. So this is what the colors, I mean, I can't speak for every printer. Kubota-san, with his huge experience, he may have a color cabinet full of a lot of things because he works for different publishers and they may want a specific kind of green that you would have to go out and buy or something. But for our type of printing, Kubota-san and our printers here, we use a base group of five or six colors. We have one basic yellow these days. It's a similar to a lemon yellow. Or in the old days, we would have had a darker ye yellow called Sekyo. But it's not permitted now because it's full of arsenic powder. So that's our yellow. Then we have a couple of reds. We have a, a cool, cold red called Honyoko. And we have a warmer red called Bengara. Then blues, we have the standard blues, the Prussian blue that we use for the standard Ukiyo-e Ukiyo era prints, like, like Hokusai prints, whatever. And we have uh, Blue Lake, Ai Leiki, which is a more modern blue. And that's, and then black, Sumi. And then we also sometimes have a mercury powder. Uh, it's a shoe called, it's a vermilion color. And that's it. That's all we have. We have everything else we make from that base. Although, remember, other printers, other uh, workshops do use more modern stuff as well. I got talk, 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 talk. Well, whatever, that's what it's going to be today. Can we look at a couple of prints before I get to the auction packages? I'm not sure how much of this is publicly open. This is from a gentleman from Greece and has left a print. I think we're okay to show. I think for sure we can show this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think also we can show names. The letter, the little note. Somebody came while I was around. I came from Greece for a two-week trip and I was very unlucky that I didn't meet you. Everyone here is very friendly and helpful. Thank you for your streams and videos. And please accept my first, he says, please accept my first ugly print as gratitude. It's almost certainly not very ugly. Let's have a look and see. Ho, 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 ho. Oops, I'm not doing very good of keeping it centered. Sorry about that. Look at this. Is it loose? Can I, can I? It's, it's mounted in this folder here. Now, why would a Greek person be making a print like this? <laughs> hey, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He's got embossing just like ours. <laughs> I don't know. Are you watching, sir? Are you here today? Or are you still, you're still perhaps traveling in Japan? I don't know. It's he, he, she, I'm sorry. Vasilis, it's not the gentleman's name, I think. Are you here today? Speak up if so. And he's got it in title in Japanese. It's look at this. Can I, just a minute, let me turn this so I can read what's going on. Athene no Acropolis. I guess the, the Acropolis of Athena, whatever. And it's 2222, uh, 2022 year and the sixth month. And he has made a circle with his uh, name inside. Koda Rus. Rusu Koda. Ruko. Kodudasu. Which way is it reading? Ruda. What's his name? Kodu dasu. So it goes down this way. It goes left to right. Ooh, I'm not sure about that. Kodu dasu. Kodu dasu. Come on. What a nice, nice, nice print. How many blocks we got here, gang? There's at least two green tones there. There's a base, sort of beige yellow with a, a yellowy gray. One, two is a key block. One, two, three, four, five, six. One for the sky, two for the sky. One, no, there must be, look at this. We've got dark and light here. I think there's two blocks here. The upper sky and the blue inside the clouds almost certainly has to be a different block. 
There is. There's two blues here. <laughs> Scaffolding. Very nicely done, sir. I guess if you're going to see this on the VOD later on. Very, very nicely done. I got a ton of questions. Is this cherry wood? He's here. Oh, you're here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two for the sky, 14 blocks. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry to have missed you, sir. I can't say, you know, I, I did announce that I wasn't going to be here, but I guess I can't you. Look at this. Okay, a couple of questions. Number one, like this is not your first print, I presume, right? I don't think this is your first print. It's very well done. Beautifully registered, smooth color. Oh, there's a commentary. Oh. Okay, that's just long, long, long commentary here. Whoa, 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 whoa. No problem showing. Now it says, now I read this. No problem showing this on stream. Okay, I think it's okay. There's nothing really private here. What I'll do is there's a long explanation here. I'll put it slowly into the stream here. So what you can do is you can read this later on the VOD. Let me do this. This is really, really interesting information. But says, let's do this. If I just scroll this, people will be able to read it later, pausing the video when they look at the VOD. Is that okay if I do this? It really looks like just generic information here. If I scroll it up, and we have an Instagram link here. Let's do that just one more time, just so we got this thing. Okay, there we go. So people can read this later on by pausing the video. And me too, I will read it carefully later on. 3D printed information, yeah. What's the carving? Cherry from Serbia, no. This is oak. Oak, wow, I would not have thought that would have been printable to that extent. You won't you size the paper yourself? No way, come on. Congratulations. Very, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Earliest. Why would we what would earliest would be the title? Congratulations. Very nice. Thank you for showing it and thank you for being open and letting us see what's going on. Very, very nice. He says, next batch will be much better. First print. <sighs> People are chasing me. Very nice. Very nice. Another one. The problem with doing too many of these all at the same time, some of them might be better than others, whatever. I don't know. It doesn't much matter. I think we're all, we're all fair game here. Just let me check first to see if this is okay to show on stream. Just a sec. I think we're okay. Very different kind of print. This is very different. Oops. This is somebody in Germany. Now I'm going to read the list. Just, just one sec here. Hang on a sec. So, this is a different approach. This is not traditional type Mokohanga. This is a more modern type. And the, the prints here, a different kind of paper complete. So it's not going to look the same. Just one sec. Is it okay? I think we're good to go. This is a very different approach. This is... I, I detect some, some oil-based ink here, I believe. 
it's hard to tell. This is not Japanese washi paper. This is a completely different approach to the print here. It's oil-based ink. This is going to be rolled onto the blocks rather than the Japanese approach. Oh, look at this paper. I guess this is local scenery again. This is in Europe, presumably. I think the person is in Germany here. Oh, wood block, here we go. Oh, I see. So he's putting a document with each one, testifying that it's handmade and etc. etc. Are you here? The person who made these prints, are you here today? I don't there's no no, no mention of a a twitch handle or something. No. And there's a couple of smaller card, postcard type prints as well. This is very much a style that is common here in Japan these days. I know people who are, I know the expression is Sunday painters, people who are not so much professional painters or designers, but they work like on the weekends or so, maybe going to a, a, a local community center to get lessons and things. And the kind of prints we're seeing here are very, very, very common in that kind of an environment. And it's not, it's not done the way that we do ours, so I can't really make too many comments on how, how this is done. I don't really know. It looks like a key block first and then separate color blocks have been made from this, because there is. You can see that the little white gap here shows that there's a key and block combination here. Yes, somebody's commenting. It looks like a storybook type picture. These looks like they're the pages for a story that would go along. Interesting. Totally different approach from what we do here. When I said they were, look, you can see, look in the windows of the house here. See the shininess? This is what we see when there's an, an oil-based ink that's rolled on the block. I would presume that's what's happened here. You can see the shiny ink as I move it in the light. Where are the pictures? The, the gentleman's name is Germany, a resident of Bavaria. But where the pictures are taken, I don't know. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. If anybody out there is sending, I, thought I saw somebody else is commenting just a moment there. If you're sending, I'm never really sure what's okay to show on the stream and what's not. So, well, here we are, Prague. The first prints are the smaller ones, my favorite pub in Prague. And another one's two scenes from where I live and a half timber house nearby, a 400 year old pilgrimage church in my village. So if I were doing this, or if I had those blocks, for me, a, a nicer, smoother, richer Japanese paper would make the thing look more traditionally Japanese beautiful, but that may not be the approach that he's trying to get in any case. Okay, thank you for sending these. Let's have a look. Okay, okay, okay. I'm really sad I missed that gentleman here. It was a couple of days ago. Can't be helped. Let's move on. We've got tons of packages to open. It's 8.40 here. What do we do? What do we grab? Tell you what, let me move the flask because I've got some larger prints to open here. So give me a sec.
Okay, we've got a good scene. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff waiting here to be opened. Some of it I remember, some of it I don't remember. It's stuff that I ordered or bought weeks ago before going to Canada. You're asking about movies. I know, yeah, 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 perfect days. I haven't seen it. I've had a bunch of emails and stuff coming in from people. Dave, go and see this, go and see this. There's, I guess, they walk by our shop at one point or something, or they're on the same street here, and our shop is in the background way, way, way far away, I think. Whether that's a good reason to go and see a movie, because Mocha Hong Kong appears as a co-star, I don't know. This is January 30th. This is a long, long time ago. Okay, let's have a look and see what's inside. <laughs> I'm in a mood, you know. I've been back a couple of days now, but as I said, I spent the time in the shop not doing any work. I just sat in the shop and there was visitors coming in and coming in. So I'm really not ready to, to work yet. And I'm sort of postponing it. Opening these things today is just going to be a great chance for me not to do any real work yet. You know. But come, I guess Ayana-san is probably going to show up at 9 o'clock and she'll say hi Dave and we'll chat a bit about the work. She'll go upstairs and I'll do the stream here till 9.30. Then at 9.30, I'll shut this down, get a cup of coffee, and boom, that's the moment when my, you know, the vacation I had ends. And there will be people upstairs, and every one of the people, person, people upstairs is going to have their list of stuff. Okay, let's start with number one and number two and number three and number one and number two and number three. <laughs> So it's like I'm, I'm walking to the scaffold, you know, I have that mood and that feeling right now. It's 8.42, I got like 45 minutes left, 50 minutes left before I climb the stairs and head for the scaffold. You know? <laughs> so, excuse me if my mood is a little bit, a bit whatever. I'm happy, I'm okay, but, but whatever, you know. <laughs> Hey, counting layers, is this a first for us? We open the first layer and boom, we're there. Is that a first? Someone says you could keep the stream going. Yeah, right, keep the stream going and gather them all around. And Okay, let's get through these lists. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, questions, questions. Did I determine if they were the Ultra Blades? They seem to be the same thing. They're a darker color and they are marked in Japanese super sharp and they are marked as, as black style. So I think these are the same blades. If anybody doesn't understand, this was a conversation that started three weeks ago. Oh, no, it wasn't one layer, it's two layers. There is a plastic wrap. I thought, I thought that was a new world's record, one layer to get a package open. Okay, what we have here, I remember this now. I ordered this couple. This was on Yahoo Auction, uh, long before, in January. Somebody had three books. These are Kyoka books. And unfortunately, the guy did something that really, 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 really frustrates him uh, and upsets me. He had three volumes of the same book. This one is the one that's marked with a symbol for up. This is Haru Spring. Haru no Re, or Jo. Books published in the Old in Japan. It might be two volumes in a set. They would be Jo Ge, up, down. No real meaning of up, down. Just simply two characters that would tell you which is the first and which is the second. When it was a three volume set, it would be Jo Chu Ge, up, center down. Again, nothing to do with vertical physical location, just showing the sequence of one, two, three. And this is, this is the third one. And what he did was he took the three books and put them on three separate auctions. The dimwit, he's trying to maximize his profits or something, I don't know. Somebody bid for one of them, I bid for one of them. I didn't get all three. And the book set, which has been kept carefully side by side for 150 freaking years, is now split apart, going one there, one there, one there. 
that kind of stuff should be, should be, get off my lawn, whatever. Anyway, we have, it's Kyoka, ano, Kusa no shu. I'm not really sure about the difference. It's all, it's, it's a poetic expression. We have grasses and fields collection. And the Kyoka poetry was a type of poetry common through the 1800s in Japan. Although oh, still, still people do write poetry in it. Let's see if we have a date. I do not see a date here. Give me a second hunt for a date. No, there may be a date in here somewhere hidden in, in a poetic illusion style. Instead of saying Meiji, what year it is, it may be in the poetry. Okay, no idea. No idea on the date. We are looking at something maybe late Edo, early Meiji. Late Edo, can I? If I was just going to put my finger on the table and guess a date, I don't know. 1860. I'm not really good at that. I shouldn't put my neck out like that. I don't know. Maybe somebody will know. This is, the designer is Ume Akira. Maybe it's ano, Baime, the pronunciation. I really don't know how to read the pronunciation here. And we have, of course, the bulk of the book is a collection of Kyoka poetry, which I am not even remotely going to try and think about reading. And even people who can read the old script could read these now, but they wouldn't understand the nuance and illusions that happened. Kyoka poetry would be different from like haiku. Haiku, it'll talk about, you know, the moon and the spring plum blossoms and something, and it'll be an emotive feeling that we sort of pick up from those keywords that they drop into the haiku. Kyoka poetry is different. It's more, you know, it's not sendu, satirical, but it's, you know, it's more of the day and of the time. And people would have been alluding to something that everybody else in the group would know about, but we don't know about it, so we have really no idea what the allusions were. And what we have here is a book that must have been published with poetry from a certain group. Everybody's name is at the bottom of these things. And illustrations by, I guess it's Bai Bai Mei? I'm not really sure, I'm sorry. Let's just flip through some of this. The people who published the book chose a number of the poems to highlight at the beginning of the book, and then everybody else got relegated to the back of the bus. And again, I'm not remotely going to try and pretend to tell you anything at all about the poetry. For me, the pleasure of this thing is the object, holding a book that's this old, the super delicate thin paper, the beautiful way this has all been carved. Everything you're seeing here in terms of poetry, this is carved on a piece of wood. Handwritten originally on thin paper, kind of just like what you see here. This thin paper would have been very similar to the way the book would have been produced. I can't even split this apart, it's so thin. I can't get my finger in there. Here we are, just a second. Boom, here we are. Look at this. Let's get this back a bit. If I put my fingers inside the page here, you can see that the printing was done on stunningly, stunningly thin paper. Put my fingers behind this, you can see my fingers. That's the paper that was used for printing this. That's one side of one block, the other side of the same block. Insane, absolutely, absolutely insane. Someone's asking me, what kind of paper is it? Is it Kozo or Gampi? I don't know. I don't know. It's certainly not something like the good thick Hosho paper that we use for making our woodblock prints these days. It's extremely thin <clears throat> and it's got a lined pattern from the screen that it was made on that I don't recognize. It's not really a super high quality paper. I don't know. It could be Gampi or Kozo, maybe even Mitsumata. I don't know. I'm sorry. But the delicacy. So this is what I like about this stuff. I can't read the poetry. I'll never know what it means and I don't care. But the delicacy and pleasure of just holding this thing and seeing how well they did their job.
And a book like this would have been no way expensive at all. It would have been cheap. Nice, beautiful carving. Someone says how old it is, I guess. We haven't got a date on this, I'm sorry. It would be mid-1800s, mid-late 1800s. 1850, I don't think so. 1860, 1870, somewhere around there. This book actually is probably known. And what I'll do, now that we've opened this up, at the end of the today's stream, whatever, I'll Google this up a little bit, because this would be a known book, and it'll be in the records of, of the publishing records. In fact, maybe has somebody already looked it up and I didn't notice it went, it went by? Nice scratch carving. The carving has been made in imitation of brush strokes. What you're looking at is woodblock prints, but they've made it look like the brush is running out of ink here. This is a little bit of what we would call a kasure bori, carving in imitation of brush strokes. If you're going to be wanting to Google it, let's go back to where the title is. The title is Kyoka, and we have the characters Kusa no Shu, a grass fields collection. And this is the spring group, Hadu, Hadu no Ue. And searching for that should probably bring up uh, information on this. And there were three, three different auctions, and I was only able to get one of them. The other two have flown off to different homes. So I'm saying, would the grass field refer to the cursive font? Your guess is as good as mine. I claim really no knowledge of this at all. I'm sorry, I really don't know. Perhaps so. Perhaps they're referring to the style of presentation here rather than a theme. I don't know, I'm sorry. If you're going to search for the designer of this, the kanji I did recognize was Ume Akira, or Baime. The guys, you know, the people who made this book back in that time, they, were, they would obviously be thinking of themselves as very cultured and high cultured. They're doing poetry in beautiful calligraphy. The poetry is full of all kinds of delicate nuance. They would write the poem. Other people in the group would see it, understand what's being reflected on. And if you imagine that group of people, they're sitting there drinking tea or sake, exchanging poems, preparing the publication of their next book. They absolutely would have seen themselves as cultured, refined people. And I could imagine if one of those guys could have a little time slip view of 2024, when the book that they had, you know, produced and, and brought into being is being pawed over by this barbarian foreigner who, one, can't read the stuff, two, couldn't understand the poetry. If he could read it, they're thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's the end of the world, you know? <laughs> so. And it's okay, I don't claim to be the man who would understand this. My interest, as you know, is in the, the manufacture and the way this is carved and put together. And in my own world, I'm not so much of a barbarian. I'm as refined and as cultured in my own world as these guys were in theirs. So they can, they can shoot at me all they like, but I don't care. <laughs> Here we are, here we are, here we are. This has got to be our designer's name, right here. This has got to be it. Okay, guys, get your Google ready. We have it here. This is Hinoki N, and it might be Hinoki no N, Hinoki N, and this is by Akira. I know, Ume Akira, but the pronunciation could be Ume Akira, Ume no Akira, by me, by me. So for your Googling, well, you know, whatever, Nani, Hinoki N 
Ume Akira. Those are the four characters to put into your, into your search box. I'm sorry that I haven't done this in advance, but as you say, I'm just coming to this randomly today with the different things we're looking at. And the rest of the book now, the other, the other hundreds of pages, whatever, in this book now, are just a collection of poetry, each attributed to the person. And it's not their real name. This will be their handle name within the group. Nobody would be using their real name at this point. It's just the, the, the name of their stuff. And I guess the sensei or the older people in the group would have been choosing which ones to put in the book. And the people who wrote the poetry, the group members, would have been coughing up the money to get their stuff included. And whether it was sold for the general public or not, or just distributed to group members, I don't know. I'm sorry. It might have been for sale in bookshops back in the day or not. There is no specific colophon in the book, and that makes me think it might be a private production rather than something that was sold in bookshops. But there you have it, a nice little treasure. It cost me, I think, a thousand yen. Again, nobody is really interested in this stuff. Someone's saying, is that poetry on the edges of pages? No, it's the you know, title of the book. There's a little bit of writing at the edge of the page. No, it's the book name. We had it here. It's on a nani kusa no hadu we. So that once the, when the pages are all loose, there's a page number. This is page number three, four, five. That's the carving that tells the bookbinders how to put this all together. So each one of the wood blocks that was used for these things had in the very center of it. The center of the woodblock would have had this. It's the title of the book and the page number. So once all the printing was done, bang, 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 200 copies of each sheet, whatever, the people who did the bookbinding would know what order to put everything together. There we have it. I'll look up, when I get a minute, I'll look up and see if I can find more information about this. But there you have it. It's 8.57 on Monday morning. While we're waiting for Ayano-san to drop by, let's see if we can find something different. I've got this pack of stuff all sitting behind me here. What are they all? Let's have a look at this one. I don't remember what this is. <coughs> I don't remember what it is. <coughs> and it's also, it's sent to us with the secret, uh, secret source. People now can send things in Japan without putting their own address on them. So the, the receiver's address has to be there, so the post office knows where to deliver it, but the sender's address is kept secret. I really don't like that system, but that's the way it goes. You could buy something at an auction, pay the money for it. You have to put your own name and stuff up front. You pay your money into the auction escrow account, not knowing who the seller is, and they could send you a box of rocks. It doesn't really happen that often, but there it is. I have no idea who the person is from whom we bought these things. That's just the way it goes. There's this whole f mood of privacy, privacy, privacy. And again, package one, package two. We're in in two. No extended unboxing today. This one, I can see what this is now. I remember this. This one is fun. And if I just showed you these things up front, I don't think you would even recognize these as woodblock prints. But let's have a look. We have here a bunch of postcard prints. And these are, I believe, post-war. Maybe post-war. Packaging, packaging, packaging. Postcard prints, but if I had not, let's just, let me get in here. So that was one layer, that was two layers, this is the third layer, and now each one is in its own little plastic. So there's four layers to get to them. And look, at 
what we've got here. Now, if I had just dropped this on you, who among you would think this is a woodblock print? If I were just seeing this image somewhere, there's no way I would see this as a woodblock print. I mean, look at this. The, the way the color is just smeared on. The color doesn't come in the lines. It's, this is a watercolor picture. This is watercolor. Yes and no. The original, absolutely, of course, was a watercolor. But they then, a publishing company then, took those watercolors and cut a set of blocks that would make woodblock prints that have the appearance of being a watercolor. And the reason I bought these, I don't myself actually like this kind of presentation, but what I do want to do is learn more about how to take a watercolor painting and make a woodblock print out of it. For example, Jed San, Jed and I, some years ago, he had a bunch of watercolor sketches that he had made of the Japanese countryside. And I was thinking, let's turn these into woodblock prints. But I could not figure out how to take the overlaid areas of watercolor and make them into woodblock prints. Now the theme here, we're going to see the theme as we go through. This one clearly is bundaku. This is a person. This is the puppet master here, dressed in black. And he is holding this puppet, manipulating the head and manipulating the arms. And we have here three puppets. Here's another puppet with his master. And here's another puppet with the gentleman behind him. I know nothing about the theme or what's going on here, nor am I really sure about the designer here. Mm, 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 mm. Scribbled in. Oh, okay, we do have a name here. Bundak. Okay, we have lots of explanation here. Okay, this reads right to left. I said 1960s, you know, 50s and 60s. It's possible these are pre-war. Let's hold off on that. It could be 40s, I'm not sure. We have reading right to left. We have information here. This is, let me turn so I can see it. This is Saito, somebody's name, and it's... Say, mm, say... Saito Seijiro as the designer. That's my first guess on how to read these. Saito Seijiro, and it's Bundaku, Bundakuza Han. A publication of the Bundakuza would be the place name. And then do not copy, do not reproduce, the copyright name. Have we got a name? Have we got a Google here? Let me type in what I said. See if it works. Saito Seijiro is my first attempt to read the designer's name here. Okay, enough talk. Let's flip through these things. Are they all bundaku? I don't know. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe this is a bundaku collection. Yeah, I think so. And look at this. Look at the way this has been turned into prints. You know, Dave, I said, I don't, it's not a style that, that I really, really particularly like, but I really want to know how to do this. So that was it. Was it, did I get it right? Oh, I missed this so often. I'm happy to get one. Saito Seijiro. Thank you. If we get a date here. What era is this guy working? Yeah, look at this. This is wood block printing, you know. So for that pink, there's going to be, my guess is, two blocks. There's a block for the lighter pink at the bottom and a block for the darker pink. And they've all been carved with itabokashi. The blocks there would have been carved with, with uh, beveled edges so that the print doesn't come up smooth. Look at this. We've got the same thing here. This is a sharper edge on this block, so it prints clearly. The pink blocks don't have such a sharp edge. This one, sharp cut. This one, vague cut. Two blocks for the black here, or one block with pigment splashed on it? I don't know. Famous for his bundaku prints, 1930 to 1945. Yeah, pre-war, I guess. Then that backwards writing will pretty much nail it for you. 
Post-war, we rarely, rarely see any horizontal writing done right to left. Post-war, horizontal writing would be left to right all the time. Someone says it says 33 or earlier. Okay, it could be, I guess. Which would put these things as 90 years old. Possible. The paper is, you know, the paper has seen better days. Oh, what do we see? There must be a story that I don't know here. Look at this. There's, she's on a bridge looking down into the water and the reflection is a fox. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Did you walk from Bueno? Yeah, but the problem was the huh? train delays. Another train delays, really? Hey, Three come. different troubles. One trouble with really? the mother and the, the, the one cause mother. Come and say hello. But come and say hello. Ayana San is here. Hi. How you doing? She's worried about being late. Really? Yeah. Really? Really? Oh. I understand. Do we count minutes here at Moko Hong Kong? I, I don't think I've played a minute. <laughs> so quite my, point is, my point is we don't count those. Six <laughs> so. yeah. The camera's in the way here. Can you step forward? Just, um, just a second. I think it's in the way here. So. Oh. oh, I moved the camera here. Okay, good, good, good. Oh. How you doing? I'm okay. Good, 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 good. I'd Yep. Didn't get any injured during the last <laughs> week. And There's a backstory there. I, I didn't mention any of that stuff to the people on the stream uh, okay. here today. Yeah, and I, and I'm no no details, no details. But it turns out when I was over there, Ayumasan was really respectful of the idea that Dave's on vacation, and she didn't at all bombard me with all kinds of stuff. You know, you, some, you know. Only some important things. So it yeah. it turned out that there was a couple of things just while I was over there. When I left, it was a long weekend here in Japan. That weekend. It was a fr Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think. I can, no, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I think Actually, it was. two weeks in a row. Uh, it was a long weekend. So, 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 so. But just after I left, it turned out there was a long weekend here. We didn't think about it. No big deal. But what we hadn't known was during that long weekend, the post office updated a bunch of their computer systems without letting their customers know. So Anusan came in to m work on the morning of the Tuesday after I had gone to Vancouver. No idea to bother Dave with anything at all, but the shipping system, our shipping system, was broken. And she didn't know why, and at first I didn't know why. It turned out that it was because of that background post office update and lack of communication. But Anusan had no recourse. Dave, I'm really sorry to bother you while you're with your family and your mom, but Moko Hong Kong is closed because we can't <laughs> ship anything. You know? And I'm like, the one day in the year when I get over there, you know, yeah, I'm not angry about this. Of course, you know, my first impression is, hey, let's go. I got something to do. Because what I was doing was, my mom's in the hospital, nursing home there. She says, hi, Dave, how are you? I'm saying, mom, how are you doing? And we're all okay. And then she sits there. And like, there's no conversation in the long, long days in the nursing home. So, the fact that I had a job to do oh suddenly. Oh my God, you're working at the nursing home. So, of course I'm working. There's Wi-Fi in the room. So I'm sitting there in the nursing home room trying to figure out, one, what went wrong, two, what can I do to fix this? And Like, do I have to fly back or something? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Long story short, I put a workaround in place. The system was partially broken. Whatever, we don't need long explanation here. I put a workaround in place so that Anusan was able to get the stuff processed through to the shipping department and orders were stoned. It's more work for her, the, the, the runaround, workaround, but she could get the work done. And now one of my jobs this week, now that I'm back in harness, is trying to figure out how to really fix the problem in the background. So anyway, the point being, she didn't bother me. Except she did bother me. <laughs> it's well, I, I it's wasn't okay, me who was okay. bothering me with the so, post office so. system. And the other thing then, again, and not too much detail about this, was I got back. I hadn't known about this at all. I got back on Friday night. And the fact that I was back in Canada meant the employees felt they were okay to email me. And it turned out that we have one employee uh, who has uh, badly, uh, quite badly, oh, She's burned herself at home, kitchen accident, whatever. So we had an employee on a kitchen accident and is now hospitalized. And I guess I gotta go and see her tomorrow to show her, go and have a yeah, look and see her. So, so. So. She's gonna be okay. And there's no, no life-changing damage here, but this lady at the moment has burned uh, herself badly and she's gonna need some support here from, uh, 
from a bunch of us who are going to be visiting and she's going to need financial support too, I think, whatever going on. So, so that's a really bit of a disaster for this person and we're going to, the team here is going to do what we can to help her. And another employee without names has done something with a tool I don't believe here at Mokohankan. I believe I at home and I don't know. And he's in surgery as we speak. This other person is in surgery putting part of his hand back together. And this is sort of, this also is big, big news. And whether this happened here at Mokohankan or not, I still don't know. So there's like all kinds of stuff has hit the fan here just on the last couple of days of I've, of I've come back. And I'm doing the stream here now, but I tell you at 9.30, once we're shut off, I gotta get upstairs and we're gonna be hitting the ground running here to try and see what's been going on here. So, uh, I guess, so as far as we know, the people are going to be okay. The people are going to be okay, but there are a bunch of problems happening here right now to somebody. And the other thing is the, the Yaksa news. I guess, I don't know, did you hear about this? No, I haven't heard anything. This happened like a day or two days after I left. We, we joke about the Yaksa here and the ninja boys across the street and stuff. You didn't see the news reports? No. So you, maybe you, the one you forwarded to me. I did. I sent you the link ah, that I had okay, got. Yeah, I, did, I, I got the news report. So I checked this morning before I started the stream. There was a, a Yakuza incident involving an arrest two doors down from us. The, the guy who lives upstairs above the theater was taken away in, in, don't say in chains, taken away in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. I sent a link to this, but the, the TV link has now broken, so I can't let you see this. Long story short is in front of the temple down there, in front of Senzoji Temple, there's a little old guy, not so old, little old guy who sells uh, soda pop type drinks, traditional Japanese type soda pop, damune. Okay. You know the one with the marble in the top, you pop the marble in and you drink all the sweet sugary stuff. He, it turned out, was the same guy who lives upstairs here in the third floor, two doors down. Who I knew he was Yaksa, but I didn't know it was the same guy who was selling ramen. How are you So no How big deal. I mean, keep these guys busy instead of running prostitution rackets for middle school girls, sell some soda pop on the street. I'm all for this, no problem. But what had happened was the ninja guys had been putting out their flyers, come to our ninja shop, come to our ninja shop. They got near this guy, not knowing anything, whatever. Hey, hey, come to see our ninja shop. He grabbed one of them and started to do that you're on my turf. And if you make more trouble, you either pay me, and he named a figure, get off my turf or pay up. You know, again, I wouldn't have ever known this kind of thing was happening here, but there it was. They went to the cops. They did the right thing. And boom, that was that. Cops all over the place. And it was on the TV news. There was like eight, eight or nine plainclothes cops with their stuff heading up the stairs. And out he comes in the cuffs. And I don't know, he might have been released the same day or he might still be in the thing. Society these days, really now, there's been a sea change. Society is now no longer being accepting of the gangsters. Society is really doing what it can to now shut this down. Now, mafia is what it is, and there's no way that they're all going to disappear. But this kind of stuff now, you can get the idea. The, the message is out to these guys. We just don't want you around here doing your stuff. And all this happened while I was away. It all <laughs> but, happened quietly. So, I didn't, I didn't quite, but they, they, you know, there was the cameras and here's our street and it didn't, they didn't show the Mokohangan sign, here we are hunting for Yaksa, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. But, uh, so the article's there, so I, so I see the, the, the mods here have, have linked, it, uh, linked it up. So, so. Anyway, that's, at the moment, that's all I know about this. I just landed the other night. I haven't had a chance to chat with anybody on the street here. Of course, I'm going to talk to the guys at the theater here, Yamaguchi-san, who will know all the backstory. So I'll repeat anything I hear <laughs> to the chat later on. <laughs> so during the two weeks when I've been away, there's been just this place. <laughs> Nothing goes on for week after week, day after day, day after day. I leave and... Boom! Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, really? Anyway, anyway. What I was doing, I, I guess you didn't hear it today. There's no way I'm going to start carving this morning. So I thought what I would do is just have a sort of extended show and tell. We've got 
tons of packages here I haven't opened yet, so okay. that's okay. what's been going. I also have lots of prints to, to show you. This we mentioned so so stuff that the printers, yeah. but you haven't held them all back. They, you sent them through, right? The ones the okay, printers, printers thought were okay. Went to went to Ome, and I'm holding those NG prints and maybe unquestionable. Maybe yeah, NG, maybe this okay. is as I mentioned. So I understand. Got the prints from the printers, blew through the ones that the printer said. I'm sure these are okay. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are maybe David would like to look at, they held those back. So thank you very much. Okay. I also yeah. see the schedule. I guess we're kind of running late, are we? So with the you. with the Kyoto Journey, so. Feb. Which one is this? Kyoto Journey February, February print. This, this okay, month. we do these. The Kyoto Journey print for February. Uh, they're not all printed yet. The first batch of was it two hundred or so? I don't remember the number. The first batch of X hundred came in while I was away and have been sent to subscribers. But the second batch for the subscribers who normally get their print at the end of the month, those are still actually being printed by Kubota-san, who we talked about a little bit earlier. So the, the first batch was actually 108. So 100, okay, yeah, whatever, yeah, I don't remember yeah, the numbers. Okay, 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 okay. So, so, anyway. so the first batch is out, the second batch is not out yet. The Hokusai print for March, those I believe are... Well, Ready. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're ready to go. There's no delay on that one. But there is on the February subscription print. Maybe I got it a bit uh, late when I was organizing it. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, it was the carving on that one. Yeah, we had to split yeah. it between three people. Yeah, yeah also. Yeah, yeah, Did you have yeah. a sandu? Well, I will, I will talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She put the, the great wave, the show. Yeah. Are they I not? I haven't heard anything back from her yet. Any day now. In fact, I expected to find them on my desk here, the next batch of great waves is going to be ready any minute now, any minute now. You're, you're standing by to send out emails to the next 60 people. So if you're near the top of the Great Wave waiting list... So this <laughs> <laughs> so this Okay, yeah, I'm going to go up. So says, show the Greek print. I will, I will, I will. Relax, relax. They're going to hit me first and then somebody... Well, here, you can take it with you. Take it upstairs. This came in from... Uh, this was on my desk when I got back here. I can't find it. I'll show it to you. Relax, relax, relax. No, okay. We'll be showing you. It's okay. Hey, thanks. I'm sorry not to listen to your news here. Whatever. No, I'm sure there's lots of stuff. I have yep. interesting yep. news to, to share. Yep. Okay. So. okay. Yeah. We're all back. Okay, see you soon. Yep, two minutes. Fire up the coffee machine. I'll be ready for a cup when I get up there. So, so much stuff has gone on the last couple of weeks. I'm like, whatever. So after that, after that first you know, email from her letting me know about the software problem, I said I did put the patch in place, but that opened the floodgates. That meant that it's now okay to do communication with Dave while he's on holiday. <laughs> so that was that. And after that, every day I get up in the morning over there in, in Vancouver, check my email and see what problems had to be done, and away they go, and out we go. So, so did I have a holiday? Well, yeah. Yeah, but did I have a holiday from work? No, no, no. This is, it's kind of a, I can't say, I was going to say it's an existential problem for a business. It's not existential, but it's a massive, well, it's an issue for our business. You know, we have a fabulously successful business growing by leaps and bounds. One of the reasons we are so successful and managing is because we have fabulous IT systems. I've been programming now for more than 40 years. I've done all the software for here, and it's super smooth, beautiful custom software. I admit at the moment there that we had a problem two weeks ago, because that's because of one of the APIs that we use had changed without our knowledge. So be it, that's going to happen, whether we had a big ATI team here or not. But the point I was trying to get to, because I'm the sole maintainer of this software, I am locked into that chair. And how are we going to get out of that situation? Now, I know what's going to happen right now. People are going to say, Dave, I'm an IT guy. Let me do this. Let me take over from you or let me help you or whatever. But if I did that, if I said, okay, Mr. X, good, you're living in Germany or whatever or, or Finland or somewhere. You're a good IT guy. Let's have you do our systems. Then Mokohanka and the company is beholden to one person out there now who holds all the strings for our software. And if that person gets sick or doesn't want to do it or says, gee, I think maybe let's renegotiate that contract we had, then we're screwed. So right now, Mokohankan is all dependent on one person for the software, but that one person is determined. He lives and breathes the success of Mokohankan. 
So how do we transition from this system where I hold all those cards to a system where the day that Dave dies or something, who's going to run this? And I don't know how to handle this transition. I really don't know. And I'm sure people are going to say, Dave, I can help you, I can help you. It's not that I don't trust you, but are you going to depend on me or are we going to depend on you? And who is safer from Mokohanka? I think the, way, the only way forward is we have to grow enough here that step one for the IT part, yeah, I get an assistant. Maybe that person's in Japan or maybe that person's overseas. It doesn't really matter. We got a deal where, okay, one, you come in and join me. We get a contract that you do X hours a month. Step one, you learn our software. Step two, you work with me to maybe build a new module or do some maintenance, whatever. So that would give us some insurance if I went down. Somebody else knows how to do it. Then the next step would be hire somebody else. This is a right-hand assistant. I then hire a left-hand assistant, someone who lives in a different part of the world, and do the same thing. And these two people would work with me on the maintenance and development of this software. And that gives us a chance then, when I something happens to me, like as in, eventually I'm going to die, then those two people become our IT team, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, one more thing. Let's do it. We're 9.21. We're still buzzing on this. I've got packages and packages and packages to open. Let me open one more that we can look at and enjoy just in the last few minutes of this stream. Do you remember or do you know the print we have in our catalog, the scent of chrysanthemums? Right? The print with the lady... I don't have one, I'm sure I had one, whatever. You know the print, the scent of chrysanthemums. The designer of that was a guy called Kajda Hanko. A bit of a funny name, actually. When you first hear that, Kajda Hanko, it doesn't sound like a real name, but it was the guy's actual real name. Anyway, he was a print designer back in the, back in the Meiji time, back in the mid-Meiji, and maybe even late Meiji. I don't remember when he died. He designed a ton of book illustrations and kuchie. It's the lady with the hair. Yeah, the chrysanthemums and the hair. Bingo. Someone's got a picture there. Thank you. Anyway, he did a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, kuchie. Now, people have seen the kuchie in our catalog, and they've seen the kuchie prints that we have here, the frontispieces. But what I haven't actually got in my collection is a way to show people how the different kuchie were used back in the original day. Now, while I was over in Canada, an auction came up here for an old magazine with a Kuchie illustration by Kajita Hanko. So I thought, great, I can't read old magazines or whatever, but I really want to be able to show people the origin of how those frontispiece prints looked. So let's get in here. We've, we've uh, opened this up. We had one layer. Oh my God, it's so tightly. Wow. How to get in here without... Hold your breath. Here we go. Okay, we have got... We have got some dates here. This is not a book. This is a magazine. If you go to your newsstand now and you buy Life magazine or Time magazine, well, I don't know what names of magazines are out there right now. This is what a magazine used to look like back in the old days. We have a date here. This is Meiji 34. I'm looking at the screen side of the book. Meiji 34, the first month, the 15th day. So it's the 15th of January, Meiji 34, which must be around 1900, somewhere on there. Somebody got the date for me here. Come on, guys. 1901. Oh, 1901. And it's something about to do with sumo. I don't remember. This This could be a sumo magazine. I thought this was maybe Bunge Krub. What do we have here? What do we have here? Where's the, where's the package? Is that the package I opened up? Also, what did I do with the package? No, I don't have a note here. 
And here's how it worked. In order to help people get excited and buy magazines, it became really common for the publishers to put a color frontispiece into the book. And here is a Couture print in its... Oh, good morning, Gurugao san. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Here is how the Couture prints were actually used. Here you are. And now you can see why they all have such vivid fold marks in them. They were stapled or glued or tipped in. I think I mentioned on some previous stream that they were stapled in. And I got a long email from somebody who knows a lot about Couture saying, they weren't all stapled in, some of them were glued or whatever, whatever. Okay, 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 I did. They were fastened into the book. This one I can see is actually stapled. Many were not, but this is the deal. And we are seeing an illustration from one of the stories that is inside the magazine. The editors would have picked up something, sent it out, sent the story out to the designer and said, run me up something that would make a typical couture. And this is an era now where the, the bulk of the magazine now is made on printing presses. The book I showed you earlier in the stream with the poetry, every page of that book was carved on wood blocks. This is different. This is now printing presses. We have here a book printed on movable type, of course. By this, this is 19 or whatever it was. This is made from movable type plus sachet illustrations. And what you see here on some random page is an illustration carved in wood, and it would have been carved on a piece of wood that was type high. And it would have been printed together with the, the metal type when they were laying out the physical thing where they put the type in facing up, it would have the block for this. And this might be in one piece of wood or two pieces of wood, I don't know. They would cut the piece of wood to fit the thing. This is a wood block print carved but not printed with a baron in the old traditional way. Carved on a block and stuffed in together with the page. And there would be woodblock prints in the plank style, like we know, and there would also be woodblock prints in the engraved style. This piece now, this you can see clearly, is done in the European style. This is a wood engraving, not done with the kind of knife we have. This would be engraved with a burin. Again, on a piece of wood that is type high. Sassier, woodblock printed illustrations from magazines. Hand carved and totally mechanically printed with the rest of the book. All the illustrations in the book are not by Kajita Hanko. He did the frontispiece. The rest of the illustrations will have different designers' names. And this style of publishing, with metal type interspersed with illustrations and frontispiece with a couturier, this ha it, it was common over a period of about ten years. Whatever, I'm not the researcher. Maybe in the middle 1890s it started, somewhere around 1895, we find the first examples of it. And it ran through till about 1905 or 1907, somewhere around there. And this, this magazine, if, somebody, if it was 1901, this is just about exactly halfway through that period. And you can see too, they're experimenting. This photograph, half tones, I think, this is a sec. Yeah, it's a half tone reproduction of a photograph. So we have all three different printing methods here. We have a half-tone photograph, which would be done with uh, offset. The metal type, which is straight relief printing. And then we have at the beginning of it, a woodblock print done in the old traditional style, carved on wood and hand printed on wood, as you can see from the back. So all together. 
And as I said, for about, it's a period of about 10 years, this stuff was, was common. I think this is an issue of the Bungay Kudab magazine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bungay Kudab was the name of the magazine. It was a, a literary magazine, but not literary in the sense of like Nobel Prize winging literature. It was literary, just uh, short stories, uh, opinion pieces, stuff like that. Who would be the purchasers would be normal middle class people in Japan. By this time now, there was a burgeoning, growing middle class, and those are the people who would be interested in this. This issue, I guess, presumably, is dedicated to stories about sumo, or at least the, maybe the main story is, the rest of it might be average uh, literary pieces. I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. Man, I have talked too much, and I don't know if I've showed you enough prints, so I'm really, really sorry. I don't know. Just to get things back on the road. Today is Monday. The next stream will be Thursday, and I promise it won't be all talk. I'll do some work. Maybe I'll do the repair work on that block we saw this morning, or maybe I will be ready to start carving on the surfer girl, or maybe in my list of jobs that they're going to show me upstairs when I get up there in a few minutes, maybe there will be something else that I will need to be doing on stream on Thursday. No promises other than that I'll be here, and we're going to do something that I hope will be reasonably interesting. Thanks very much. I apologize for the long break for a couple of weeks, but hey, we all get this kind of a break now and then. Thanks to the mods for waiting, and thanks to the mods for coming back. I thought this might be their chance to run away. Who the guy sounds laughing at me, so... Okay, and I'll update you with whatever news I can about the, uh, the, the, the Yaksa Soda Pop salesman, if I learn something. Thanks very much. I'm happy to be back. I'm, I'm really kind of refreshed from the break. Not really ready to get back in the saddle, but things are what they are. Thanks again, guys. See you in a few days. Let's dial this up and see what we've got. Blue skies. It was terribly rainy yesterday. Freezing yesterday. <sighs> okay. Thanks very much. Signing off. Three, two, one, let's go. Bye for now.